the king's palace, the arrival of Princess Azurine and of Prince Bel Azor. The king announces to the company the betrothal of the princess, his daughter, with the young prince. The fairy godmothers bring their gifts. The fairy Aurora gives the princess beauty and bestows a magic flower to guard her from evil. Everybody is rejoicing when suddenly enters the witch whom the king has forgotten to invite. In spite of the excuses of the prince, the old witch declares that she will avenge herself. The princess Azurine, still suffering from the excitement, enters her boudoir to take a rest. The princess gets into a bed in the shape of a shell and supported by cupids and soon falls to sleep. Suddenly the witch appears. She pulls the magic flower from the princess's hand and tears it to bits. Then the old witch summons several demons, whom she orders to seize the princess and to bind her. The witch then orders a chariot drawn by fantastical animals. In spite of her cries, the princess is fastened into the car. Hardly have they gone when Prince Belazor, awakened by the cries, rush in and struggles with the demons who vanish into smoke. The people of the castle ascend to the upper platform. Suddenly, they perceive in the heavens the fantastical cortege bearing away the weeping princess. The prince sickens at the sight, but encouraged by the lords about him, vows he will again find his fiancée. The people in the palace descend in haste to the armory. They fall upon the weapons of war and quickly transform themselves into warriors armed from head to foot. Following after his comrades, Prince Belazor is stopped by the witch. Laughing at his preparation, she announces that they are useless. She gestures and immediately one side of the armory fades into an inaccessible rock. On its summit, a tower with not a single door or window. The prince sees the demons draw near to the tower, dragging the chariot of fire.
he darts forward but the vision fades away and he falls against the wall of the armory. Fortunately, the good fairy Aurora appears and frees the prince. She announces that she will protect him and then summons the genius of invulnerability who enters in the form of a lame and deformed dwarf. The genius presents an impenetrable armor which renders its owner invulnerable and likewise a magic helmet and sword both endowed with marvelous powers. the docks of a port on the ocean. The sailors of the Royal Navy are making final preparations before weighing anchor. The prince and his suite hasten aboard the galley for Aurora has told the prince that the princess is shut up in the tower in the midst of the ocean. The mighty ship majestically moves away. Hardly has it gone when the witch appears upon the dock. She laughs fiendishly and sets loose the elements upon the royal galley. The waves swell with rage, the sky becomes threatening, the galley rolls and pitches along the billows. The storm bursts forth with fury. Suddenly the galley strikes upon an enormous rock which emerges from the midst of the billows and the ship founders disappear in a vortex of foam. Some water nymphs, attendants at the court of Neptune, visit the remain of the wreck so as to support to their lord, the god of the sea. The fairy of the waters, urged by Aurora, come to their aid. <laughs> 